All right, everybody, the coronavirus relief bill has finally been passed by the House. It's up to the Senate to review it, vote on it, and pass it, which ultimately goes to the White House for President Trump's signature. And boom, after that, this bill becomes a law, and we will all expect a coronavirus relief check very, very soon. Now, I do have the full text in front of me, and I'll go and break it down for you guys. What's exactly in this bill? How soon can you get your $600 of payment? And we're going to go briefly discuss the latest on the Paycheck Protection Program, as well as the second coming of the EIDL program. Okay, everybody, so just as I mentioned, I have the full text, the bill in front of me right now, and the whole thing is about 5,593 pages, which obviously it's a lot, and that's the reason being is that the actual coronavirus relief bill is part of a larger bill, an omnibus bill that has to do with other non-coronavirus-related bills, other governmental provisions that is going to be passed. Now, the actual bill for the coronavirus relief starts on page 1823, which I'll leave the text down below so that you guys can follow with me. And anytime I mention a specific provision or stipulation, I'll also mention the page number as well as the section so that you guys don't get lost. So in page 1823, that's where it starts. Now, I'm going to go and start breaking it down to what you guys want to hear the latest update. The very first thing is that the $600 per adult and qualifying children, that starts at page 1966. The Treasury Department Secretary Steven Mnuchin says that the checks can be sent out as early as next week. So as soon as Senate passes it, President Trump signs on it next week is the earliest we can see the $600 per adult and per qualifying children check could be sent out and we can see that now the $600 per adult is similar to what we've seen back in the CARES Act so if you're making less than $75,000 as a single filer you'll get the full $600 if you are a joint filer meaning you and your spouse are filing together if you're making less than $150,000 together, you'll get the full $600. Now, if you make more than the $75,000 or the $150,000 threshold as joint filer, then of course the checks can start tapering down until zero. So the $600 per adult and qualifying children, that we can see as early as next week. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been asking from my last video, asking, well, will adult dependents qualify as well? And that's something that I'm finding out about right now. I'll do some more research for you guys. But from what, I, what it looks like, as long as they are a dependent claimed in your tax return, they are a qualifying children. Again, I have to confirm this. I have to fact check. But basically what the bill says right now, that's what it seems like. So that's the $600 per adult and qualifying children. Number two is the $300 a week of unemployment benefit up to 11 weeks. And of course, CARES Act was $600 a week, so we'll have a half of 600. Now this provision starts at page 1934, 1934. So if you guys wanna follow along with me, you guys will be able to see that as well. So that's 11 weeks of $300 a week of unemployment benefit. Number three, tax credit to support employers offering paid sick leave, which grants employees two weeks of sick leave related to COVID-19 at full pay. So if you think you got COVID-19 or if you're sick because of COVID-19, the employers must give you two weeks of sick pay at full payment. Now, luckily, there is a tax credit to support the businesses that participate in this. That's also part of the bill. Uh, next thing is $25 billion in emergency rental assistance and an extension of eviction moratorium. Now, the current legislation or the last legislation that was passed extended the eviction moratorium from December 31st, 2020 to January 31st, 2021. Now, I haven't got to that part just yet. Once I read through that, I'll give you guys more update. So yes, I have, I'm not quite finished done reading 5,000 pages worth of bills. So <laughs> let me get through all 5,000 pages and I'll give you some more updates soon. Now, there's no mention of the student loan forbearance part of this bill, which in CARES Act, what happened was all student loans were temporarily stopped from any interest being accrued, any late fees, any penalties. So pretty much all individuals or borrowers that have student loans, they weren't required to pay anything for the student loans and no interest was accrued during the time when the payment wasn't required. Now, there isn't any mention of that with this bill, although that is set to expire on January 31st, 2021 as well. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you my screen and show you what I'm reading here, and you guys can follow with me. I'll change tabs and so on to, to let you guys see the bill. So, all right. So the next thing is 15% boost in SNAP benefits program. Of course, that's for uh, food stamps as well as nutritional program. Very, very good. I know a lot of people weren't a able to afford food during the COVID-19 times. 
I'm glad this is happening. All right, the next thing is no state and local funding, which is very interesting because that's what the Democrat leaders and Democrat congressmen and senators were fighting for, which is about $300 billion. That isn't part of this bill. Also, what's not part of this bill is the liability protection for certain organizations and businesses. Now, the Republican, the GOP, wanted the liability protection, and the Democrats wanted the state and local government funding. Now, obviously, that's a compromise because what GOP wanted, they didn't get it. What Democrats wanted, they didn't get it. But what does matter is that the things that everyone agrees on is on the bill. That's a win for everybody. So right now, there's no state or local funding. $10 billion for child care and development block grant. That's on page 1826. So if you guys want to see the details, go read it. And I know it's really boring and it sucks to read the, these bills. So I'll do my best to break it down and show you exactly what it means. And again, I'm still reading through it. I'm kind of halfway through reading the actual coronavirus relief bill. I got into the most important parts, the things that you guys want to know. So the next thing is funding for education, $81.8 billion. This is going to be available through September 30, 2022. Now, this is for high schools, elementary schools, certain universities and educational organizations to be able to prepare and also open safely with COVID-19. So this is great for schools. Awesome. Uh, Parents with kids, you're going to start to see schools reopen with some safety measures in play. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is a paycheck protection program. Now, this is page 2009. It starts there. So if you guys want to read the details, it will be made available. Now, one thing that a lot of people were confused and also concerned about was that if PPP loans, if you received a paycheck protection loan and if you get the forgiveness, the concern that a lot of people had was that any expenses that were incurred using the paycheck protection program funding weren't tax deductible. So essentially, you weren't able to double dip if you use the money from the Paycheck Protection Program to cover the expenses. You can't take that expenses and also count it towards tax deduction again. Now, the new bill has made it pretty clear as to how this will be treated. It says, no deduction shall be denied or reduced, no tax attribute, attribute shall be reduced, and no basis increase shall be denied by reason of exclusion from gross income provided by paragraph one. So basically what that means is that if you are a recipient of the Paycheck Protection Program, you use the funding to cover certain expenses that were qualified under the program, you can also count those expenses as tax deduction. Yes, you can double dip, and it's gonna help you greatly with taxes. And it makes sense because what's the point of you getting to pay for expenses that you can't write off at the end of the day Day, that pretty much hurts you more in terms of getting the COVID-19 relief you need. So if you're a business owner, this is great news because you can essentially take the funding from Paycheck Protection Program, get the forgiveness you need for using it on qualified expenses, and taking the tax deduction, such as payroll, or in this case, PPE. I know I said yesterday PPP, which my mistake, but PPE, personal protection equipment for COVID-19. Uh, next thing is that also Paycheck Protection Program recipients must show that they lost 30% of gross revenue during the same quarter in 2019. So this time around, if you want to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program, you must show that you had a reduction of 30% of gross revenue when compared to the same quarter in 2019. So there are additional funding for Paycheck Protection program made available once this bill is finalized and passed by Senate and President Trump. Uh, next thing, which I know a lot of you guys are excited about, is the EIDL program, and it's been updated it to be more stricter and more targeted. Now, I do applaud SBA for that because last time around, back in March of 2020, when CARES Act was passed, the EIDL program was a complete mess. I mean, it was subject to fraud, a lot of false applications that came in, and approximately 60 to $80 billion have been given out on fraudulent application. So this go this time, the SBA has made it stricter, made it more targeted, there's more qualification process, which is great because it actually targets the people that need the EID loan. They actually need the funding to be able to survive and continue to paying their employees and of course, continuing their livelihood. So let's go back and dive into the basics of the EIDL program. And of course, I'll have a separate video with the return of the EIDL and, and I'll share what's changed, what's not, how to apply and so on. So definitely subscribe to our channel if you guys want more information on that. If you're a business owner, you should bet basically pay attention to what's going on right now. So the mention of the free $1,000 to $10,000 EI grant is there, but there are some changes. There's All right, so here it is, page 2190 of the bill, section 332, emergency EIDO grant. Basically what this does is it takes the provisions and the text from the CARES Act and makes some modifications. So a lot of the rules still remain the same, but there are a lot of changes with this new bill. So right, right away, uh, it is striking down December 31st, 2020 for the expiration. 
inserting December 31st, 2021 as the new expiration. Further changes are such as striking away approving the application based solely on credit score of the applicant or by using alternative pro appropriate methods to de determine an applicant's ability to repay. So they're no longer using credit scores and they're, they're no longer using alternative appropriate methods to determine the application's ability to repay. Now, another major change or something that's being removed is that the SBA EIDL Advanced Program no longer has to pay you within three days. So right here it says in subparagraph A, as so that designated by striking within three days after the administrator receives an application from such an applicant by adding at the end of the following, of course, here's the new timing. So now it's 21 days instead of three days. This is great because it actually ensures that the SBA knows that the recipient is a qualifying entity and they are legit. So this will prevent a lot of the fraudulent applications that we saw in the last go around with the EIDL application. So here it is, timing 21 days after date which the administrator receives the request. Now, here it is, verify whether the entity is an entity that is eligible for loan made under Section 7B. So that's the EIDL. So there it is, folks, the SBA has tightened up they are more targeted. They're not just giving away money anymore. They're making sure that the businesses that, that are applying for the EIDL loan and advance are legitimate and they qualify. So boom, there it is. So back to my nail with the EIDL loan program, to be able to receive this program or to receive the loan or the advance, you must have no more than 25 employees, suffered an economic loss of not less than 30% unless you're an ag agriculture enterprise, and also located in a low-income community. And of course, low-income community is defined as such as in the IRS code 45DE. Now, one thing that's part of this bill that weren't in the bill in the CARES Act is the grants for shuttered venue operators. And that's basically grant money for live venue operators, motion picture theaters, and funding for theaters. So this is grant, folks. $2 billion of grant is made available for live venue operators, which makes sense because a lot of live venues and theaters have been closed and they're in the brinks of bankruptcy because of COVID-19. So there are $2 billion grants made available. Now the qualification, there's of course more information in page 21, 24. Now what stands out for me is no more than 50 full-time employees, which means that big live venue companies and big motion picture companies aren't qualified to receive the grant. Now this is great because a lot of the small mom and pop live venues can receive the grant and survive and stay afloat because of the COVID-19 situation. All right, so that's all the updates I have for you guys so far as I read more on this and I'll go deeper into what's going on. I'll make some more videos and updates as far as the latest on the relief bill. Of course, we have lots to dig in with the Paycheck Protection Program, the EIDL. So I'll have a separate video made for you guys in regards to the EIDL loan. And yes, the EIDL advance has returned, but with some really tighter and stricter rules. So we'll go and cover that in a separate video. So with that being said, I'll continue to read the text and I'll share with you exactly what's good and what's bad. And as I get new information, I'll go and update you guys right away. So be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want the latest information, as well as we share a lot of videos on how to make money, how to invest, how to get into real estate, many, many topics on how to make money. So definitely stick around and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.